Hey everybody and welcome to King of Shadows 1111. This is Queen of Light 1111 here with a reading for you. I want to thank all of you for liking and subscribing and being a part of this channel. This channel is growing so much and I am so extremely grateful to my soul tribe, to all of my new followers, to those of you who have been, been with me you know, since the beginning of Queen of Light 1111. Thank you for joining me here. I appreciate you all so very much and I'm excited that we have this channel as a means to, you know, support the masculine energy, whether that's the masculine within or the sacred um, twin flame counterpart. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at what masculine's messages are to his divine feminine. And I've chosen five as the number of messages because Five is a number of change. Five is a number of, you know, significant change because it's challenging change, but change that will occur, um, you know, for the better. You know, there's there's one thing certain in this world is that is change, right? And taxes, right? So, or what do they say? Death and taxes. I add change to that. Nothing can stay the same. Everything changes. So what we're going to do here is we're looking at masculine's five most significant messages to his divine feminine. Now, if you guys want to book your own personal reading, coaching session, or healing session with me, go to queenoflight1111.com. And if you're interested in using any of these tarot decks, it's in my description box, my Amazon storefront, as well as links to the Intuit Oracle, which is this last layer that I'm using here. So bottom of the deck for his first message is finances. Financial challenges are affecting this relationship. It has kept him very, very stuck, mentally stuck, and he's finally starting to walk away from this energy, okay? Starting to walk away from the energy of feeling trapped, from this energy of just feeling like a victim. And he's really collaborating, wanting to collaborate and challenge things and move forward. I feel like he's in this energy of, um, you know, power and courage and confidence. So anywhere where there was a challenge financially, where he had been stuck, he's walking away from that stuck energy and he's ready. He's ready to, you know, lead. He's ready to challenge. He's ready to, um, you know, claim his power again. So the first message with that being the bottom of the deck is interference. An external party is meddling in this relationship. So this could be in a literal sense money. Uh, that is an issue because we had finances at the bottom of the deck. This could be that if there is another relationship or another, um, you know, whether it's romantic, fam like a family relationship or a friend relationship, you know, maybe there are finances involved. Maybe there's money involved, money that was tied up in this connection, okay? And so an external party is meddling in this relationship. He's letting you know. He's like, hey, there are things that are outside of the two of us that are affecting this connection. My wish, okay, my personal wish is to come forward with an offer, and I will, right? So maybe this is in the next full moon, the next full moon cycle. It does say autumn. So it could be in the energy of autumn that an actual offer comes in. But I do feel like summer months, things are going to develop. I feel like, you know, this could be um, just the energy of culmination, everything coming together, because here's the energy of a new beginning. So what he's, his first message is, you know, maybe there are some financial difficulties in his life. Maybe money was tied up in another relationship and it has interfered. But remember, the bottom of the deck is showing us that he's he's claiming his power. He's in his courage. He's walking away from that sort of energy and victimization and he's challenging things now. And so he's just letting you know in this first message is like, yeah, other people or financial situations were affecting this wish, this wish for me to come forward with an offer to my queen and bring in change and bring in a renewal to our connection. The second energy that his second message that he has for you is shy. You know, he's with you. He's feeling a little timid. He's feeling a little shy. He's reserved. He's not ready quite to come forward yet. Okay. And that was because he was in this energy of 
you know, self entrapment. He wasn't sure. Is she going to want to hear from me or not? You know, is she going to want to, you know, team up with me again? You know, there's this past and this present situation. I don't know if she's going to allow me back into her life in the future. So he's a little reserved. Okay. He's saying I'm a little reserved. I've been stuck in my head for a long time. I do want to team up, but I don't know, you know, if, if there's the opportunity right now. So the message as related to that is lonely, isolated, alienated, friendless, you know, so he's in this energy where he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm feeling lonely. I feel lonely. You know, maybe I've left you friendless. Maybe I've alienated you. So he's letting you know that he's in this energy where he knows that both of you are alienated from each other. And he's, he's assessing that. He's analyzing that. And he's working hard on himself right now. He's working on mastering himself. And he's very much contemplating and reflecting on this connection with his twin flame. He knows that there is a deep soul connection. Okay? This divine twin flame connection. This feminine who is the one that he has isolated his, himself from, that he has alienated. And so right now, he's working on himself. He's working on his own contemplation. He's working on, you know, his own healing. You know, he's doing some deep meditation about this connection. Next message, he's saying, you know, there's an energy of instability. You know, things have been unstable, okay? He's been stuck in that stable energy. He's coming out of that stable energy, wanting to work together right? When the opportunity presents itself, right? He knows that things have been very unstable between the two of you. He knows that. He's saying, I settled. I settled, right? Actually, that was not the bottom of the deck. Darn it, I put it in the wrong order. So let me move that and let me tell you what the bottom of the deck is. Free will. It's free will, okay? He was stuck in his own free will, because of his victimization, he's walking away from this free will to really team up, okay, and see if there's an opportunity. So he's saying, yes, feminine, I did exercise my free will, and when I did, I settled. I settled. He's, he's saying that he settled. He knows it. He's like, I was stuck in my victimization. I was stuck in my free thinking, and I settled, right? I settled. I moved on to third party connections. Here he's admitting it, admitting it. I've moved on to third party connections. And then no, the situation or event is not unfolding at this time. So what he's saying is I've moved on to third party situations, but that situation is not unfolding anymore. I am not in that third party situation anymore because I've overcome my barriers. I'm done com com uh, compromising myself. So that's very interesting. So he's saying here, okay, well, I settled. I moved towards third party connections. Nope, not anymore, not anymore. So let's pause there for a second because you know I wanted to cross check. I cross checked and I said, okay, spirit guides, angels, our masculine here is telling us that he's no longer in a third party situation. Please tell us what is his energy towards third parties or towards that third party situation and tell me what is the energy of that third party connection. And so we have here the bottom of the deck, five of swords, five of swords. Isn't this interesting? Didn't I say five was an important number? And guess what? Right underneath the five of swords, Five of Pentacles. And look at this. You can't make it up. Underneath it, Eight of Swords. Oh my God. Underneath it, Eight of Pentacles. And underneath it is the Empress. You cannot make it up. So what is this telling me? Is that this connection, nobody wins. He has been in this energy of low self-worth, stuck in that energy, and he's working on himself to get back to his Empress. Didn't we see the Eight of Swords here? We sure did. What do we see it with? Eight of Cups. He's walking away from that energy, from this victimization energy, from the energy that does not allow him to step in to his growth and development, okay? Five of swords, nobody wins. He knows in this connection, nobody win. Nobody win, <laughs> nobody won. It was a sneaky, nobody wins connection and he's seeing the truth. 
He's seen the truth about that matter and he's ready to have joy in his life again. He's ready for peace. He just wants peace. He's done his karma. She's done her karma. It's time to balance things out and it's time to move on. So what is his energy towards this third party relationship person situation? He's done a lot of thinking. He's grown, he's spiritually mastered himself and now he's moving on. He's moving out of that energy of isolating himself and hibernating and he's moving on to, to uh, align himself with his higher self. Where do we get the six of swords people? Right here where he told his feminine, I settled. I moved towards third parties. And now when we ask, what's his energy towards the karmic? Hermit, I've looked at myself. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move towards higher consciousness, higher thinking. So he's he's really had chance to look at himself. So what is the energy of that connection? What is the energy of that third party karmic connection? He's in his power. He stands as divine masculine, ready to take a leap of faith towards completion, towards being a leader. So then I said, all right, well, that doesn't really tell me if he's going to start a new cycle with the karmic or not or what. I said, who is he moving towards? Who is this leap of faith towards? Third party, someone else, divine feminine. He's moving towards divine feminine. Didn't we see this here? Empress. One, two, three, four. Oh, you can't make this up. This was the fifth card. One, two, three, four, five. He's moving towards his empress. So masculine's fourth message to his divine feminine. What's the bottom of the deck? Okay, here's where we got unstable. So remember, I said unstable. He feels like the connection's kind of unstable. He's been in his victimization. He's walking away from it. You know, how do we work together to create something that is uh, long-term, okay? So he knows things have been very, very unstable. And he's worried. Okay, I'll tell you, he's worried. He's worried that you're going to, like, rip his head off, okay? He's worried that when he comes back, right, he, he's in his power here. But Divine Feminine's always been in her power. So there's some worry that she might be vengeful. You know, King of Swords, he's got to be ready. He's got to be ready with his words. He's got to be ready with his wisdom. He's got to be ready with his honesty and integrity if he wants to be in this divine connection. So he's really going within. He's really going within and developing himself and his subconscious and reflecting because he knows his divine feminine is intuitive. He knows his divine feminine is psychic. And that if he comes at her with the wrong information or any sort of untruth, she's already going to know it. So the last message from masculine to divine feminine is, I want to have a deep conversation with you. There is love that I want to communicate with you. I've been stuck in my head so long. I'm ready to walk away from being stuck. I'm ready to harmonize this connection. I have clarity now. So what is this energy of this love language? So remember I said, well, he's kind of worried that you might bite his head off. So he sees you as this fantasy, this beautiful dream. Okay, and I do feel that he is dreaming of you right now. He is healing himself. He's healing his intuition. And I do feel like he's dreaming about you. That's how he's communicating with you right now because he's processing this area of vengefulness. He's dreaming about you. You know, aphrodisiac. I feel like some of these dreams are kind of sexy. So if feminines are picking up on any extra energy in their sacral during the dream state or when they're lucid or when they're waking up, it's because masculine is feeling very passionate about them right now. She is this fantasy lover. She shows up in his dreams. She excites him. She heals him. She's unattainable. And he's feeling this romance and this love and this passion towards her. Expect the unexpected. It's kind of like he might get so like worked up that he might just be like, all right, I'm just going to take my chances with this vengefulness because I just, I want to be with her. I want to be with her. So it really feels like masculine is really coming out of not doing anything with this karmic connection 
and moving out of it. He's ready. He's spiritually mastered himself. He's ready to move out of that connection and align with his higher self. He's ready to align with his higher purpose. So in the connection, he's got his power back. Nobody is oppressing him. No one is overpowering him. He's ready to light his, lighten his load, start a new cycle, and be this leader and complete that connection with the third party and take this leap towards his divine feminine. That is what he wants. That is what he will do. I see it. I see it. I see it. I know it. I know it. I know it. And notice we have one, two, three, fours. We have four, four, four. We're just missing the fourth four, which would be that four of wands. And here it is in the four of swords. Okay. But it's got to come out of it. It's got to show up. And then we can put that wand in the ground and build that foundation for union. If you want to book your own personal reading coaching session or healing session, or if you want to book your own Twin Flame messages, go to queenalight1111.com. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.